We are in Hyannis at Cape Cod Panel visiting on behalf of Anderson Windows. We're here checking out a project that Mullen Building is putting together. He is doing a project up in New Hampshire and has partnered with Cape Cod Panel to panelize the entire construction of this home. So today we want to walk you through why Doug chose to go with the panelized route and how that process actually happens from raw material all the way to a finished wall. Here we're going to show you how that they end up uh, planning and accounting for the Anderson 400 series windows that will eventually go in these openings as well. So behind us we have a couple panels that are completed. One of the things Doug is dealing with in Conway is actually the new energy code. And they're requiring exterior insulation on this project. The important details with exterior insulation is how they detail around that window. And that's because of the flange and the new construction window, right? So. The new construction window is going to have a flange and you have an exterior insulation on this panel so you can't fasten that window into the sheathing and then into that insulated panel so you actually have to have structure to nail that window flange into so you'll see on all of these panels that the exterior sheathing and the insulation is left back from the rough opening and then they install these window box in here so that's tying into the framing so the window actually has structure to mount to. If you look over here, you actually see the foam behind this the, the sheathing panel. And if you were, as Tyler said, installing that nailing fin and nailing through that, you're going to end up crushing that foam and, and just not give the window a solid detail. So Anderson actually provides a document, which is an exterior insulation supplement document. Or an installation insulation manual. Installation <laughs> installation manual, which walks you through the detailing on that, which is really important because when you're installing these windows, you want to make sure that you're installing them per the manufacturer's details, obviously for the longevity and of course the warranty. So before we get into all the nitty gritty, why don't we head inside? We'll talk with Doug. Nick. How we doing, man? Good yourself? Good, good. You just recently completed a project up in Conway, New Hampshire, where you actually traditionally framed that one. You're building a property next door now? I am. You've decided to panelizing it here in Cape Cod. Walk me through some of the challenges that you did face. Stick framing in a place three and a half hours away took about three months. There's a lot of quality control issues. Now I wanted to bring it to a local company, somebody I trust with Mike Riley and Cape Cod Panel. I know their quality of work. Our foundation is being finalized up in New Hampshire. So next week, these panels roll up to New Hampshire and we'll start framing right away. I think that's one of the biggest benefits of off-site construction, right? It's making it more efficient for you where you're on site, you're doing site work, you're doing prep while something else is already happening. And partnering with a good window company is really important at this phase because you're really forced to figure all of this out prior to ever stepping foot on site. Cape Cod Panel do their design, it's all in the computer, it's three-dimensional. When the, the window ROs are entered into that program, you can catch those potential issues that could come up and you can correct it way before and you're not ripping apart a wall on site, it's all figured out beforehand. The installation of a window, it's completely different than it was 25 years ago. The window buck detail here with the zip R panels, these stretch energy codes, it's something that's gonna be more common. I'm excited to see this actually end up being framed out. Why don't we head into the shop? Uh, Tyler's gonna walk us through how these panels are manufactured uh, from raw material all the way to a wall panel that's ready to be shipped up north. Let's do it. Cool. All right, I'm here with Mike from Cape Cod Panel and we we're going to essentially build an entire house, a panelized house, a structure, but we're gonna start at the first step, right? So we're taking a design and then we're gonna produce a cut list. In this part of the operation, what are we looking at? This is all just raw stock for Doug's project. The list that's in there, this saw will optimize and cut the entire house and it'll spit out random parts, but it labels come out with them. Those are all placed on carts. So essentially what's going to happen is they're going to take this skid of lumber right here. It's going to get dropped onto this saw and this saw is going to start cutting the house parts. It's not in its sequential order, right? It's not cutting every wall at once. It's optimizing each cut per piece of lumber, right? So you guys are shooting for a trash bin of waste as far as lumber goes for the entire project. It's basically sawdust and scrap. If you figure you're cutting the entire house all at once, you're not ending up with any waste because of all the small parts between the first floor, second floor. Each part on your cut list getting cut, then they're stacking it onto carts, and then from those carts, they're actually taking and assembling the walls from that point, is that right? Correct. Every cart is per wall, Yeah. and they're all in order so that when they come down the line, everything that's built and going out is stacked in a specific order 
which is also based on the job site. We usually start from the furthest point back and work our way to the front, especially if it's a tight area. The next step for us would be to see what's on those carts. So this is all of your studs, your header stock. Each cart resembles a wall? Yeah, all the walls are um, you know, all divided up, all the sails, all the headers, the jacks, all the cripples, any kind of blocking in the wall or anything like that. It's all thrown on the cart and labeled. And then you're starting with components, which is what I would call like this door frame here, right? So a lot of times the guys will come and they'll get all the door openings framed, all the window openings framed, and they'll kind of set them aside over here. So as soon as the walls, you know, hit the line, they're able to nail everything together and move it on down the line that way. And then, so all the wall plates are all over here. Uh, you know, they come off the saw, they come over here. Everything is going to get cut and labeled as a set of plates, exactly like you would on site. It goes over here. This is the layout station. And what we have up here is when we design on MyTech, we're able to get an elevation, uh, you know, like a view of like each individual wall. And then it goes up on the screen. He does the layout. Everything over here is already assembled as far as the door openings and the window openings, and it moves on down the line. So what we're looking at here is, so I see zero, three and three sixteenths, 19 and three sixteenths. That's essentially, you're taking this plate, putting it all the way to the left, and we have a tape measure on the table, yep. and he's just using a framing square and making sure that the lines match up there. You bet. So really, really straightforward, but simplifies the process rather than pulling a tape every time. It does. And, and having these guys having to figure out locations of things, you got a dedicated uh, station for that. Yep. Working our way down the wall sections, you have your components, and this is where some of the walls start getting put together, right? Yep. Everything all gets nailed together here. We kind of have a backup right now because we were waiting on you guys to get here to film. You know, by getting everything in the model ahead of time and just really looking at every detail, you're really able to eliminate all the mistakes. So as soon as it hits the line, it's just automatic. Mark, I think that's one of the things that oftentimes misunderstood is that panelization, there's only so many things you can do. And this is a great example of a completely custom wall section yep. that was designed not by you guys in terms of like the overall architecture, yep. but you're taking the architecture and basically reverse engineering it to fit your process. Exactly. So things like window box, yeah, that's not a standard detail. Yep. That was something that you're easily able to adapt because what you're doing is essentially creating efficiency in the process in which you get a wall built. Right. But Mark, something that you pointed out to me is the nailing pattern on the bottom of the stud. So it was, it was this right here, right? Mark? Yep. In the field when you're framing, is when the guys are going along and they're in a hurry and they're getting the bottom plate nailed off. Some framers don't pay too much attention to the nail pattern because they're gonna stand that wall and no one's ever gonna see that. Sure. Here we're producing a product. So it's really important that when it leaves here, it looks like a product that was manufactured in a controlled environment. You get in a hurry in the field and a lot of guys are going along and when they're nailing a stud pack together, a lot of the nails, because the placement isn't proper, are gonna go in between the studs. It's just as bad as missing the stud entirely. Exactly. Speak, speaking of nails and, yep. and, and inspections in terms of that, I'm gonna send you down to Tyler because Tyler wants to walk through the sheathing with you. Let's go. Let's go. So this is the beam saw. All the sheathing, it comes in. Usually we work in reverse on the sheathing. The one on top, it's gonna be the first wall on the line. Okay. So then by the time we get to the end of the stack and we're at the bottom, it's gonna go on the top. So you're not moving things twice. Right, you know, all the sheets, they come up, they go in the beam saw. It's got a mouth right here that shuts and then a saw runs along on the inside. As the walls come down the line here, we get to this station, they're gonna get squared. So for, for this situation, right, you're pre-cutting, I see these guys right now measuring diagonals, so they're squaring up their walls. Yep. But realistically, this is just to get them close. This sheathing that's pre-cut is gonna be perfectly square. Absolutely. So they're getting this close and then they're lining up the side of the sheet. It's almost like building a cabinet where you're using the back of the cabinet then to square the box up. You guys are getting it close and then you're taking a perfectly cut piece of sheathing and putting that on here and now you have a perfectly square wall. Exactly. All right, so we have our pre-assembled wall unit here. I see these lines and then yep. I see a machine that's going to nail this. So walk me through, how do you guys nail this off? Okay, so the reason the lines are here is because this guy over here, it's got a laser on it. You know, after the sheathing's on the wall, you're able to line up the laser on this line 
run the ceiling nailer right across, around and back, and around and back, uh, around all the openings, etc. These are kind of different because, you know, there's a buck around the windows. Yeah. Usually, we would just lay the sheeting over the windows. Right up here, we have a router. It drops down, and the guys are able to router everything out here. And we also have a camera up here because in Massachusetts, you have to have a sheeting inspection. Okay. It's usually done on site, but because we're producing the walls in a facility, we have to have some sort of documentation that they're being nailed properly. And that's amount of nails, placement of nails, all of that's an inspection. Absolutely. Cool. The benefits of this, you're not blowing nails out of the side. You're not compromising the integrity of the wood. I know even with the zip sheathing, the nail has to be placed in a specific location yep. to a specific depth. So this is really standardizing all of that to create the best final product. Framing in a control environment at waist level, it's going to help with everything from window set through finishes, through trim and everything else. Yep, this is just part of the quality control that we're able to reach framing in an environment like this. You know, because of the laser and the gun, there's not a lot of misses, but you still do have that every once yeah. in a while. Everything is moved outside there, and then there's a yard guy out there who actually inspects, you know, every wall. So after they get out there, he lifts them up with a forklift, and he's able to get under it and see if, you know, any of the nails miss. Yeah. You know, look for shiners, any kind of inconsistencies, and then they're stacked up and they're moved out you know, onto the job site. This is a second floor wall, hypothetically, these guys nail this off on the ground. They miss with their nails. They stand that up. It's now on the outside of the house. Right. You got to set a ladder up or go back and nail exactly. that sheathing at the end of the day. So you guys yep. are able to do this at ground level. Yep, Any absolutely. misses are fixed immediately. It's not forgotten about and it's a done deal. This is a little bit more labor intensive than usual, but I have a feeling with the new codes and everything else that this is going to start to become a pretty common practice. Sure, and even with thinking the same thing as doing this in the field. This is marking this out, snapping chalk lines, cutting that, finishing the quarter so you're not overcutting. You can do this all on a panel saw. Yep. That makes it so much easier and so much quicker. Cool, so what's next? It all goes outside, it gets inspected, everything gets thrown into stacks and ready to ship to site. Sweet. It's super cool to see what they're doing here at Deep Cod Panel. The, the most important takeaway from this is really in the design, and that's where the efficiency is created. They're taking the time, they're building this entire home in the computer, they're understanding all of the components that go into it. What they're doing in here is not necessarily reinventing the wheel. There's still a lot of labor do being done by hand, a lot of layout being done by hand, but they are controlling the amount of mistakes, maximizing efficiency, minimizing the amount of waste, just speeding up and expediting this entire process. It's really nice to see uh, manufacturers like Anderson coming together to work with Mullen and with, with ourselves and Cape Cod Panel um, and supporting what they're doing and providing them with all of the details to execute this properly, right? This exterior insulation, we're gonna see more and more of it. So it's nice that they're putting out the specs and then coming and helping them ensure that this is done right. So you're not getting this to site and then having issues down the road, right? All the windows can be ordered everything can show up the site and the windows can go in and it's dried in in a matter of days. Yeah, it really eliminates that, hey, we'll figure it out in the field mentality and, and ultimately that's what leads to, to issues with warranty and overall longevity yeah, and the, of a project. Yeah, the changes can happen here rather than out in the field when you're exposed to the elements and everything else. So. And based on the conversation we heard and this panel coming in right behind us, I don't think it's going to be too long until we're up in New Hampshire. We better get this moving. Thing, <laughs> this thing getting installed. So let's get this panel out of the way for these guys.